Greetings, ladies, gentlemen, and Westernites alike. This is your captain, known as the Western Wonder, speaking here. And today I'm going to tell you a little story about a creature who inspired one of the most pivotal pieces of cinema this year. The general public may refer to this fuzzy fella as Cocaine Bear, but detectives refer to him as Pablo Escobar. And here's his story. Let's jump to the year of 1985. September the 11th, to be exact. A drug dealer and former narcotics officer, Andrew C. Thornton II, was smuggling several duffel bags that contained 75 pounds of cocaine that was imported via Colombia. And during the flight, Thornton dropped the bags of coke into a forest before dipping from the plane with a parachute. Unfortunately, the drug smuggler's device didn't open properly and he plunged to his death shortly after the field launch. Eventually, a black bear would discover that cocaine and would go on a coke-fueled rampage that would become the stuff of legends. So much so that the bear would get his own movie to describe his legend to a worldwide audience and is 100% the most legit, truest story that you'll ever hear in period film. Alright, so it's not quite 100% accurate. Old Cokey Bear did not go on a one and a half hour coke binge where he murders people and breaks stuff. <laughs> far, far, far from the truth. In fact, historians say that the bear only lived for a few hours but was regarded one of the most deadliest apex predators in the world in that short period of time. Too bad he didn't have any casualties in real time. Well, now that we've gotten into the bear's backstory, let's get to the actual film. This adaptation is brought to you by the esteemed director of the Charlie's Angels remake. Uh, with this information aside, I was absolutely hyped for this film playing its announcement. I mean, a coked up killer bear going on a wild goose chase for some more cocaine while killing in the process for half an hour seems like pure cinema, pure entertainment. And the movie was getting promoted big time. While people were preparing for Ant-Man back in February, I was preparing for Cocaine Bear. I mean, shoot, the bear even interacted with various celebrities and activists at the Oscars. So surely there will be no issue with it, right? Right? Uh, yeah, it was a bit underwhelming to say the least. I'll start with the positives that made the movie for me, starting with the humor. The first half starts off strong with an expired quote that was taken from a Wikipedia entry, and it keeps rolling with the punches throughout the film. What helps with a lot of the humorous bits are the cast that was assembled for this film. I mean, we have O'Shea Jackson Jr. and Alden Ehrenreich as two bumbling drug smugglers doing the dirty work for Ehrenreich's father, played by none other than Mr. Ray Liotta, in one of his final film roles, who's searching for the duffel bags of cocaine. Elsewhere, we have two kids, Dee Dee and Henry, who I'm ashamed to admit that while watching the trailers for this film leading up to its release, I thought was a girl as well. <laughs> and one of the characters were on the same page with me. And they are portrayed by Brooklyn Prince and Christian Connery, respectively. Anyways, while they're out and about in the forest, they discover the cocaine ultimately ends up running into the bear, but is able to escape with the help of Dee Dee's mother, played by Carrie Russell. Some of the supporting characters makes the humor parts for me as well no matter how much stupid logic they have when it comes to dealing with a coked up bear. And I know it doesn't happen often in their neck of the woods, but come on. Anyways, among the standouts, Isaiah Whitlock Jr. who doesn't say she, 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 in this film, Jesse Tyler Ferguson and esteemed character actress Margot Martindale as Clumsy Park Rangers, and Scott Sice, aka that retail guy on TikTok as a medic, who have all their funny parts as well as the aforementioned kids in the movie. Now, for the negatives. There wasn't quite enough horror and action for me in this movie. It had more documentary-like pieces here and there, and the pacing and overall runtime can be filled at times, which isn't a good sign for a film that's only an hour and a half. I thought I was watching Cocaine Bear, not the Coke Ventures, Dawn of the Bear. The storyline runs in circles here and there, and eventually after the conflict with the bear, who in this universe is a female with baby cubs who are also fitting for coke, versus the humans reaches an all-time strenuous high, the movie just... ends. The bear doesn't die, though a lot of the supporting cast from Ray Liotta to the Rangers to the medics don't make it out alive by the end, while the surviving characters just go about their lives. And that's it. If I were to give it a final verdict of a rating, I'd give it a meh, or in numeric ratings a slight 6.5 out of 10. Not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination, but not what I was quite expecting. 
The first half came in literally roaring and it did not stop, while the second act became more of a slow burn sort of ordeal. If watching a coked up bear get a limited amount of kills with several characters that come and go to the point that you probably won't remember 50% of their lines by the time the movie ends doesn't affect you much, you should probably give the movie a watch if you'd like something to take your mind off of life and watch casually ridiculous absurdities abound. And with the theme of something to take your mind off of life, I highly recommend this to listeners of this podcast who might be stoners because this film sounds like a pothead paradise. All right, well, that ends my little review on Cocaine Bear. To stay updated on when new episodes drop, why don't you subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts and follow me on social media on Instagram at Western Reviews Official or on Twitter at Reviews underscore Western. Also, if you have any feedback, review suggestions, or collaboration ideas, be sure to email us at westernreviewspod at gmail.com. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you tune to the next one. But until then, this is the Western Wonder and I'm signing and snorting <clears throat> out. I make a motherfucker say, oh yeah, I'm cold as a lion with no hell. If you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear, but that bitch gonna need it. Bye, have a great time.